Yeah. I have a great questions that have come in and I wanted to ask you about. And um, so <laughs> I thought one of them is kind of gets to the heart of <clears throat> a lot of things that we that we discuss here, you know. Um, <laughs> a lot of uh, people will say like, hey, <clears throat> here it is. Um, okay, we've been married like three years. When we first met, we had a great sex life. Everything was wonderful. Well, one kid, two houses, two new careers. And it feels like she is just not interested in a physical relationship anymore. That's okay. what it feels like. So how... Yeah, by the way, let me just let me just kind of explain the rest. He says, he says, um, she never and I mean never initiates sex. And um, she says that um, she doesn't feel attractive. OK, she says she's running around with the kids all the time and takes all her energy. And look, I'm attentive to all her needs, at least what she's told me. I try to be thoughtful. I try to be present. Um, she's asked me, you know, more random kisses and hugs. I've done all that. OK, but nothing's reciprocated and it feels like that's like the big elephant in the room. Like what's left? What do we talk about? I don't know what to do. Any suggestions? So this is really normal is that you so much life happens, right? You have a house, you have kids, you have two careers. There's a lot of moving parts that this is often the program, right? That gets pushed off to the side, especially because women and men see it as different valuable. It kind of reminds me of music, and PE, those are like the first programs that always get cut when schools have problems with their funding, even though they're actually really important. And there's massive correlation between student success and these programs, right? Everyone's like, cut music. Crime went up, right? And it's the same thing here, which is that uh, there's a couple of hints that I'm picking up that were critical, which is she doesn't feel attractive. I think that maybe after having the kid. Oh, but wait a minute. He said he's checked that box. He says, everything she asked for me, I've complete, complied with. So he says, like, he's looking at it like, I thought that was interesting. I checked that box. I checked yeah. that box. So she said, that, but she said, enough. I don't feel attractive. And he said, I give her attention. It's not the same thing. So what she's saying is that, and this is my guess from the hints, right? We never get the full story. But it sounds like her body changed. Or even if it looks the same to him, it feels different to her. And being around a kid all day, it's hard for her to switch into single ready to mingle mode, right? Like party girl mode. So what's happening here, the reason the intimacy is gone is those two elements. One is busyness, which is usually like a slow death of a thousand cuts thing, right? You slowly go down from, you know, once a day to once every other day to once a week to once a month to once a year to just on your anniversary and your birthday, right? Now it's twice a year. So... That's one part of it, right? The business life happens because we don't treat it like a priority. And especially because women go, well, we already did it. You have the baby now. Why would we do it again, right? That can happen. So the second part is what's interesting. Yeah, his idea of I've ticked all the boxes. It's so strange. So it's what have you done for me lately? So he, you have to perpetually give her what she needs in order to get what you need, right? And it sounds like she needs to be told that she is sexy again. I think that's what's missing here is that he needs. Well, yeah, I'm going to tell you something that I've noticed in these kinds of okay. situations. If she meets a guy, let's say she, she has a career, because uh -huh. that's what you said. Um, she would, she could have an affair with some other okay. guy like that. Because this situation is a drag to her now. It's like, right. it's not sexy. He's putting pressure on her. Um, she's feeling that pressure. But that doesn't mean that she's uninterested okay. in sex. It means that she's uninterested in sex okay. with him. I know that's not very nice, but that's how I see okay. it. I've seen so this that's interesting. That's a different problem that I know how to fix. So, okay. In that case, if that's the problem, then the problem is that he's no longer dangerous. So, and dangerous... Well, I think that's right because he, he's he's a systematic person. He's predictable and yeah. systematic. She says, do A, B, and C. More hugs, more kisses, more ran. 
Okay, hugs, kisses, yeah. random. Got it. And so that's boring, not challenging, yeah. not he, dangerous. He hung up his guitar. Right? He <laughs> turned the motorcycle into a minivan. And dangerous means two things. There's two types of dangerous. One, there's like you do things that are a little bit wild, like rock climbing, hang gliding, horseback riding, any motorcycle, play guitar, whatever. The second thing is that dangerous with women, which is that other women could be interested. So you have to let... You exactly. have to let her know that other women are still interested in you because that's what really drives women's attraction. You ever seen what happens when a guy's single, then he gets a girlfriend the next day, all the way, these women come out of the woodwork, they're suddenly interested. He's like, where were you yesterday? There's something about... <laughs> they were yeah, waiting for the first move. Another woman wants... Um, someone that women want. Yeah, women want a guy that's wanted by other women, right? So, so maybe this guy should up his game Maybe start, you know, buy some new clothes, subtle, just buy some new clothes, get a new haircut with mm-hmm. a new style, start taking a bit better care of himself. If he doesn't wear cologne, he should wear cologne. Of course, he should wear feral, our wonderful traction cologne. And um, at some point, she notices something with him. And I would stop being pushy. I would stop pushing, stop asking. I wouldn't ask. I wouldn't push. I wouldn't do anything. And, and I would change the dynamic. So what is she thinking? And if he really wants to pour it on, he can get a shower when he gets home. That's always a clue. You know, why is he getting a shower now? He always gets one in the morning. Why is he getting another one? I wonder what happened. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think she might become interested and realize she could lose him. And I think that's what you're saying. Aren't we saying yes, the same thing? You have to be. This is a big part of my marriage because my wife is younger than me. She's very attractive. And she's much more attractive than you yes. are. Right. So if. I don't, (laughs) if she thought that like I had no options, it would definitely be a detriment. So I have to constantly do things to plant the seed. Like I got a massage recently and I was like, I think the girl looked up my shorts and like I was talking to my wife about it and I was like, you're not supposed to wear shorts for the massage. Well, yeah, no shorts. I know, but I'm a, that I wear shorts, okay? And I was like, I think she saw the wedding tackle. And my wife is like, you know, and it just, I was like, why Why is she looking at it? Like, I feel weird, right? And so it's not, I don't plant the seed that I was attracted to the woman. That's not the game. The game is she was attracted to me. And you can build on this, um, you know, because my question for you is exactly about this, a woman who's convinced her husband's cheating. What you can do is just look at all the things that a woman says, these are the signs my husband's cheating, and just do all of those, right? Like you... That's what I'm I, saying. Well, that's I, what I mean. The shower... Time, yeah. that's what... And there's things you can say that are so attractive yeah. to women. The most attractive thing you can say to a woman is this. I met someone today that's exactly like you, like a younger version of you, like 10% like more exciting, excited than you, but like exactly like a younger like more energetic version of you. It was so weird. If you say that and then nothing else, you've literally planted a nuclear attraction bomb. It's so powerful because it's literally every woman's worst nightmare. The only thing worse than seeing a woman wearing the same dress as you is if she looks 10% better. Because now you look... And a little yeah. younger. A little younger. You don't have to you say know, a lot younger. younger, just a little bit younger. That's literally... Yeah, a little bit. 10% younger, 10% more attractive, more energetic. You didn't say attractive. Yeah. You don't, more energy. Is energy you know? safer than yeah. saying attractive? Because, you know, she's like, is she pretty? Oh, I didn't even notice. Yeah. She just reminded me of you when we first met a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, okay. That will... I mean, that you're playing with fire there because it's almost too powerful. You have to be able to maintain doing it. So I wouldn't go straight to that. But that's what you're leaning towards, which is that it was so weird because she just reminded me of when we first met. Like that's the kind of thing that will remind her, wait a minute, this guy's dangerous. As in women are attractive. I could lose him. He's a threat, right? And by threat, I mean he's someone that other women want. I could lose him, that something could happen. And that will re-spark. What he's doing, and we talk about this sometimes, is that there's the 100 degrees of attraction. They were here, had the baby, she pulled back, and he did this, right? And he was pulling back. That's right. Making himself less attracted to her than, than otherwise. She's less attracted. The more he's pushing she's... and moving moving to her. Well, see, I did what you said to do. See, he's like a, um, kind of like a dog, you know, like he's doing, you know, he's been trained. It's just boring, you know. You what have to that? be unexpected. You have to, um, 
and you want to be unexpected. Way. And the thing is that, you know, when women say, oh, you're smothering me, this is what they mean. It doesn't feel like you're smothering. It feels like, oh, she's pulling back, so I'm filling in the gap. I actually started a huge fight with my wife a couple of days ago for exactly this reason. I realized that I hadn't been dangerous in a while. And it really, let's just say, it like really worked out well because like we kindled our relationship. It was exactly what she needed. It's like a reminder of like, no, like I can leave if I need to. I have options out there. And she was like, oh my gosh, don't leave. I need you, da, 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 da. I never would, right? But you just sometimes need that feeling of a reminder of like, wait, I want to make sure I keep this going. So I'm exactly with you on that. I think it's exactly the right move for this guy. I think that it's important to not fall and be more like you were when you were first dating. That's who she was attracted to. Become that guy again. All right. What's the one that you have for me? Yeah, I've got one for you that exactly feeds into this, which is perfect. I think my husband is sleeping with the babysitter. So, um, and this is one of our interesting. We've been together for six years, married. We got a four year old and a two year old. We've been through a bunch of different nannies and babysitters. Yeah. And then my husband was like, oh, the daughter of someone who works with me could be a great fit, right? And then she's like, well, sometimes I come home from work and my husband's already home and the nannies, the babysitter's still there. The babysitter comes over dressed up like really nice. And then like wearing like sexy outfits and stuff. And then my husband like bought a new jacket. He never buys his own clothes, right? <laughs> like, and then um, it just keeps escalating. It gets weird and weird. Like she starts like tracking the husband as you do, right? To try and catch him in the act to get that confirmation. And she's like, well, she comes home early to catch them. And he, the girl, the babysitter has like a set of flowers. And she goes, oh, someone... At someone from school gave these to me, right? And it's like, and it's like, yeah. um, and then she immediately text, and the husband's upstairs doing a shower, and then the babysitter immediately texts the husband, your wife is home. So she's like looking for more clues, you know, to kind of see how far it's going. And like, then he was like, hey, I was thinking for Christmas, like we buy the babysitter a car. No way, come on. <laughs> it's like, I mean, yeah. Well, he's definitely sleeping with the babysitter. It's duh. I mean, a hundred percent. Yeah. Now. Like 100%. you exact. The, I mean, I, I was sure at, at the, I thought it was just a babysitter dressing up sexy as she liked. I thought the babysitter. Yeah. Definitely liked. At the flowers. Like that. The, that was 70%. Yeah. Now the flowers is 90. And then uh, the, the babysitter dressing up means she's up for it. The husband coming home early. Yeah, so I've been in this situation. So this is why this is new. My wife, one of our nannies who's been as long as, is really attractive. And when my wife hired her, I was like, what's happening here? Because if I hired this nanny, my wife came home, she would have gone crazy. I was like, what are you doing? So having been, a, I was, we, we normally don't do that. Like that's just a, why bring like a danger into your house? Why bring a silly thing into the house? You want to hire someone that, like there's no risk for it. And it's like, nothing's ever happened, but I was like so surprised. I was like, and I keep a, a massive distance from this nanny. I talk to the other ones way more than her for exactly this reason. And it's exactly that thing of like, I was so surprised she bought this into the house. I was like, why would you do something so crazy? Like where you're going to make yourself jealous, right? So it's very important when at the moment you hire someone to keep in mind that hiring a college age girl as a babysitter, you're basically asking for it. Okay, when I was a babysitter in college, I was working for a single mom and we definitely ended up hooking up, okay? So it definitely happened in the other direction. So I've been the, I don't know if victim's the right word, but I've been the graduate of it. So the question is, yeah, what should she do about it? I can tell you that she's waited too long. She needed too many Okay, so let me let me let me tell you my experience with this. Um, I actually have people. I have a young woman that's working at our house now. She comes once a week to help, uh, sort of do secretarial work, and she's very you know young and attractive basically. But I'm very careful. Like I always make sure that my my wife is home. I have the door open. I actually have cameras in here too. My concern, <laughs> I, and I never get near her. And I I'm like. You know, like there's as if, you know how you took magnets together the wrong way and they push against each other? 
That's what I do. Like, I'm never in the same. I'm always super careful. Like, so she, there's no misunderstanding. I have no interest in her and, uh, and everything. I just think that just a side note about if you're in that situation, I would never want to be alone in the house with a nanny who's very attractive when my wife's not home. I, I think that's a big mistake right there. That was a big mistake. Um, I think in your situation, if I'm not mistaken, you have people around in your house. So you're not by yourself with your nanny, right? So she's worked for us for like eight or nine years. We've been in the same room alone once. Okay. okay. One yeah, time. And it was yeah. recent. It was a few months ago because, and I was just, I walked in my room and she was still cleaning the room. Doors open. And I think I said to yeah. her like, oh, do you want us to, for Christmas, do you want to go visit your family? Do you want us to pay for you to visit your family? Because she moved with us from our old house here to, to across the country. Mm-hmm. And it was I'm going to say a 15 second conversation. It was so uncomfortable. So yeah, I, you have to be so careful. So today my wife and I actually got into a fight today because if I'm getting a massage, she's supposed to be in the room. I don't want to be, I won't get a massage if she's not in the room and she left the room door open, but she went into the room right next door to play with the kids for the last 15 minutes of it. I was like, it's like kryptonite or not no it's like dynamite in your house you just or you know you just it's you got to be so careful well, i just it's okay yeah, you just don't but the thing is that people think that you know there's that saying of like don't let the appearance of temptation be there and that's the difference it's not a temptation like we are very careful so when we picked a massage therapist to hire we went through someone very specific that's like i'm not attracted to but like not too old that it's like horrible, but not someone that I would ever possibly be attracted to. Like we looked for the perfect person to fit in this tight bandwidth of what I'm looking for. And my wife is always there, but I'm always like, don't yeah. leave the room, never leave the room and get a massage. It's always been part of it. Don't leave the room whenever, even when my physical therapist is here to work on my arm. My wife is always in the room. And it's just part of that is that you don't want the possibility of an accusation to be there, even if nothing happens. Cause I've been in a situation that's my concern. I, that's exactly why. I, and I have a camera. You know, cameras are cheap. I, and they have sound. And so, you know, I'm not going to get a lawsuit. I'm not going to be risking something where she says I did I something. I went through a I situation do. when I was in my 20s where my manager, who was a woman, said, oh, I need to talk to you outside. And we're standing right in front of the window so everyone can see us. And she flirted with me. And I said, uh-huh. I'm very uncomfortable right now. I'm going to go back inside. And then she went and made a claim against me. I was like, guys, everyone could see me. Like she, fl- and it turned out and like, it was a whole thing. And then my manager, the other manager, like was like, I was like, didn't she flirt with you last year and then push you down a flight of stairs and break your arm? And he was like, st- I was like, what are, what is wrong with you that he didn't figure out? No, that was another woman who did that. It's, a lot, it's just that you, you have to, and I just learned my lesson. Like being visible wasn't enough, right? Cause the people, you can still get a cute. I was like, how could you, I'm standing where everyone can see well, it's a, it's a start. It's a start. Yeah. So, so that's the thing. So now if she's already in a, there's already a situation where she's, you know, the wife is concerned about it. It's probably going on. And although so, here's the other thing, let's say it's the same person. If it's the same person for the first question, she's doing all the right moves. <laughs> like Taking the shower. Yeah. <laughs> bringing flowers. Yeah. Like you want to make your yeah. wife. <laughs> Even better being alone with a, ba- with a nanny. You have no interest. I mean, in, exactly. So like, so it's actually, that's the thing on. is that this is how you, because this wife is like tracking his phone, tracking his car, watching what he's doing after work, seeing what time he's coming home, mm-hmm. yeah. all of these things. And you really can get someone super interested in you if they think something's going on. If you can get someone to do that following you around, if it's your wife, that's a great thing. So it just shows these are the two ends of the spectrum where the wife is completely disinterested or the wife is like so interested that she's a detective. <laughs> Well, I have a question here. Uh, so in, in this age of, of dating apps and online dating, so um, I think there's an underlying pressure to lay our boundaries and our objectives right as soon as we're meeting with somebody, right? Like, here's what I want. I want kids. I want this. I want that. Maybe instead it's better to sort of keep all that to yourself and just observe the other person. At some point, if you develop a relationship, right, you're all going to be talking about family and home life and stuff like that. So you're going to know what the other person's boundaries and objectives are anyway. Maybe you should observe instead of talking about it. Should anybody ever express their own boundaries and preferences and standards early on in a, in a dating situation? I, I love this question. When I was eight, 
you could see ins and outs of each. Absolutely. Point of view. So when I was eighteen, was the first time. Maybe when I was seventeen, the first time I flirted with a woman, and she goes, "I'm married," and I said, "What? That shouldn't be happening to me." And I shouldn't be running into that yet. Like I was surprised that I would meet someone who I'm like, I'm in high school, right? <laughs> of course, I grew up in Tennessee, so of course, like a lot of people, a lot of people I knew got married the day after graduation. So I understand that. Here's, I had a friend whose older brother. We were out at the place where we would go, like the teen club where you could see bands, like teen bands, and he was talking to a girl, and he's like, he was like maybe 27, 25, or 27, like. Pretty old, a lot older than us. And he was talking to a girl and he goes, do you have any kids? Have you ever been married? Right when he starts talking to her. And I was like, and he goes, he's She's like 27. So he's no, I mean, how mid-20s old or early 20s. To? I don't know. Okay. Well, she could have kids. Okay. okay, no, okay no, but you she were did have a kid. It wasn't question. like he was off. And I go, wow, yeah. why are you asking that? And he goes, at my age, you got to ask those things up front. Mm-hmm. And it kind of, be- so I think there's an age element to mm-hmm. it which is that you have certain expectations or things that like you stop wasting time as you get a little bit older. So I think. But why would he go that way at that age? I mean, that's not a, isn't that a different. <clears throat> I don't want to know if your guy doesn't want to, if your guy doesn't want to date a woman already has a kid, then you want to find out as soon as possible. Right? If that's a big thing. Okay. Or if you don't want to date a woman okay, who's like <laughs> coming off a divorce, there's plenty of reasons to not want that. Like, so when, when you live somewhere, everyone gets married at 18. A lot of women at 25 are divorced with a kid. Right. So they're coming out of, and you like, and that's a situation yeah, yeah. that has a lot of moving parts because now you're dealing with the ex husband, you're dealing with the thing. And a lot of times there's always more complications, right? When you have like mixed families and all of this stuff. So he was like, ask that right away. So as far as your boundaries, I think if you have a big thing, like example, you'd never want to get married or you never want to have kids, that's the kind of thing you can say on your state. So right. I have a friend that, She's dating a guy. She's been with a guy almost 20 years. He said that to her on the first date. And she'll 20 years later, she's like convinced she can change him. And I'm like, she's like, why aren't you taking my side? I'm like, cause he told you on the first date. He didn't hide that. Like, that I feel like right. that, you know what I mean? That's, yeah, that's the thing. Part of it is that you can even tell someone your right. stuff and they just won't believe you. And the problem is that mm-hmm. some guys change. I told my wife that on the first day, I said, I'm never getting married. And then eventually I did. Mostly for legal stuff for the kids, right? Like to me, I was like, no, we're together, we're together. It's not really about the government, it's about us. But, you know, that me changing is what leads this other person to think that this other guy will change. Not every guy will. So I think that's part of it. So I think that the stu- most of the things you put in like your dating profile are stupid. Those qualifications. Well, see, what I'm wondering about, about this guy is I'm wondering if he's asking because he thinks people lie early on. Okay. See, that's what I'm thinking. That they lie because he's saying you're better off not saying and just observing. So here's the way I like to do a job interview. I have a very lengthy description of what I'm looking for. So people who are applying for a job already have read several pages and they've gone through some hoops. But then I like to just listen to somebody because if I tell them what I'm looking for more directly, they can just spit it right back out at me. You know, I and and, and I'm, they're going to be telling me okay. what I want to hear. So maybe he's got. Uh, time when he's been out with a girl and she said something because she thinks he wants to hear it, but she really didn't mean it. Okay. Maybe yeah. That's the reason. So you have to ask the right questions then, which is like, I'll give you one from me. So a lot of women, um, I'll ask this question because I'm a big traveler. Like, how do you feel about travel? Or I'll ask something along those lines and she'll be like, oh, I love traveling. So then everyone says that. Doesn't mean it's true. So that's where he's running into. You have to ask us the fault questions like, oh, what's. When, where's the last trip you went on in the last six months is one version of the second question. And they'll go, oh, I haven't been on a trip in six months. Okay, you don't like traveling that, right? <laughs> well, I don't really have a passport. Well, actually, I've never that's been outside the second, of my state. Yeah, that's the other version. It's more dangerous, but it's like 90% of... <laughs> when did you get yeah. your passport? <laughs> How many pages I've, do you have stamped? I've well, had to get mean? the extra pages put into the back of my passport. My last passport before this yeah. one, I had to get yeah. the pages added because I travel so much. So that's the difference. So... The other question I'll ask is about career. So I, my wife doesn't work. And that was actually something I was specifically looking for. And I mean, I've met, I dated a lot of women who are like, oh, I have a career. And then they're working in retail. Like, no, you have a job, right? You have a, there's no up, there's no upper mobility. See, that would be a, that would be a question someone would lie about. You just have to, ask, well, you want to ask it in a different about. way. So I was actually looking for, I want someone who doesn't have mm-hmm. career aspirations. I'm looking for that, right? Which is surprise, I guess, but. 
I was like, oh, what's your like, you know, what's your kind of where are you going with your job? Like, what do you see? And because I dated the one the woman I dated right for my wife was like, oh, I want to open up a dive shop and this and that. And I was like, oh, because I know those are like money losers. That's like the worst business you can be in because dive equipment's super expensive and then dive yeah. rent stuff is super low. Right. Super low profitability for gear that's expensive and has a high uh, like repair rate. You have to fix stuff constantly. It's, really, it's a lot of danger. Right. Really a lot of insurance. Right. And I was like, that's a nightmare industry to be in. That's a real. It's only, it's like almost as bad as owning a restaurant. Oh, I think it's way worse because owning a restaurant, you don't have the risk of like shark attacks, drownings, decompression, the bends. Like, you, have, you know what I mean? There's a lot. Like, <laughs> yeah, you can have someone choke or all that stuff. That could also happen on the boat. So you have like a lot of extra stuff to it. So that to me was like a major. So it, it, my thought is it, it, there's a way to ask something sometimes that gives you a true answer. And the way you do it is by giving some permission to give you the answer that they may think you're not yeah. going to like, right? For example, we talked about this before about the threesome question. You go, you know what? I think it's absolutely fine. I have a friend who's bisexual. I think it's just great. You know, how do you feel about stuff like that? You know, as an example, <laughs> you, you, you said something like that as a question, but you know, you might say, you know what? I think it's great if a woman doesn't have a career, if she wants to be at home with the kids, I think that's an important career in the world. Maybe the most important one. How do you feel about that? That would be yeah. how I would elicit somebody saying, well, I don't really have a career. I really want to find a guy and settle down and raise kids. So you can ask it by giving her permission to kind of go outside of the, the reservation yeah. a little bit. So I think you get a real is to improve the way you ask your questions. And you'll get better answers. The yes. problem with dating apps is that they, most of the stuff people put is stupid. I remember a lot of women on the dating apps were like, how come your profile doesn't say looking for a long-term relationship? I was like, because I'm not. That's a weird thing to say. That's a, de that's a desperation thing to say. I said, here's where I'm at. I'm, I want to go on dates with you, and I'm open to the possibility that you make me not want to date other women. <laughs> which is a like very that. dominant and honest position, which is like you – I'm, I'm sort of I, I'm sort of open to the fact that if we got something really going, I wouldn't I yeah. wouldn't want to date other women. I would just as want opposed to, be exclusive to I'm looking for I'm a long term relationship, and the first person that says yes, I'll be in a long term mm -hmm. relationship with, because that's how you have a relationship that ends in cheating or breakup, right? Because you know, the first person that said yes, as opposed to you made me want to be in a long term relationship. But a lot of women were looking for the wrong thing. They oh, know, like oh, like. They go, oh, this guy's not looking for a long-term relationship. And it's like, no, I'm not desperate for a long-term relationship because I have a great life. So I think you're on something really good. I've got one that I think is pretty interesting because it kind of is different than you and me. Who's better at giving dating advice? Someone who's in a long-term relationship or married but hasn't been on the dating scene for a while or someone who's actively dating right now and single but they don't have long-term relationships. Somebody who was in a long-term relationship. That's my answer. And the reason is because we've learned how to do it and get good at it. And I've certainly had a lot of friends that I have uh, given, that asked for advice. I've given advice too. They usually don't do it. but And then I can see how it came out and how it worked out. Um, of course, I'm biased because I am giving dating advice and I am someone who's been in a long-term relationship. But I do think it's better. I don't want to get advice from somebody, let's say, about catching big fish and they never caught a big fish. You know, you're going to go out fishing with somebody and they just caught a minnow and I'm looking to catch a whale. I'd like to get advice from someone who's already been successful at what I'm trying to do. What's your I answer? think if you're, if you can't get a girl to go on a date with you, you want the second person for someone who's going on a lot of dates to get you there. But very quickly, you want to switch to the other person. I don't think you want. So I was in that industry for a long time and I knew guys that were going to nightclubs and meeting women for 10 or 20 years. So at the end of a night, because you have to wear like fancy shoes, my feet would always hurt. And I was thinking to myself, like, I don't want my feet to hurt for the next 20 years. So I, to me, this is a phase. And so at that time, that was the right type of person to get advice from. But for a very short window of time, I was like, I don't know how to talk to a woman. I don't know how to say hello. I don't know how to get a phone. Number. You want to learn from mm -hmm. someone who's very mm -hmm. active mm -hmm. and doing what you want to do. So if you want to mm -hmm. learn how to meet women during the daytime, meet a guy who's doing that. However, I would never take... That's the difference between beginning. So that's why I see it as phase, like dating advice versus relationship advice. For relationship advice from those guys, no yeah. way. Are you kidding? Like that's how you – those are the guys who are into things like what single-sided 
mul- like multiple partners. Like, oh, I have six girlfriends, but they're not allowed to date anyone but me. It's like that's so complicated and weird. Like all of that. That's where you start getting that weird stuff. So mm-hmm. that's where it is. I think for a short window, if you can't get a girl's phone number, you can't get dates. Then the the guy who's that's who you want advice from. But as soon as you're getting dates, you want to move past that and switch. I think that's good. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Um, I think you want to ask someone that's successful at whatever you're doing or activity as if it's makes sense. Okay, good. Uh, let me ask because the you. only yeah. thing is like I don't know how to use Hinge. It was invented after I got into a relationship, right? So not that it matters. It, yeah, so it, it doesn't small, matter. Less, yeah, and then you move past it. Things. Like that's the one thing I don't know, and then you're like all oh, good. So that's what. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you got it. You figure it out. Um, I'm a man who came to the USA in 2012. I'm, I'm average. I have a stable job. I save money. Anyway, I was fixed up by with this girl and introduced to her. And you know, we had a few met a few times. Long story short, we decided to to marry. Now, on our wedding day, neither of us is crying for joy. I don't know if that's normal. And after we get married, I have a strange feeling. I'm not 100 percent happy with my wife. I'm not afraid she's going to dump me. I just don't feel like I made the right decision. What do you think? Uh, you signed a lifetime contract. Like, I always think of it like you know the thing where like, you sign a deal with the devil, and then you go, "Wait, I changed my mind." He's like, "Yeah, I don't do buyer's remorse." Like, so, I mean, if you really feel strongly, this you need to annul it fast. Like, you should immediately get at it because you're mm-hmm. hurting her but it sounds like to me reminds me of indian matchmaker it sounds to me like there's like something going on where it's like a cultural thing of like oh we went on three dates and then we got married like that kind of thing because you said set up so i went <coughs> mm-hmm. i wonder if there's something of that going on which is the because he doesn't sound normal the way he describes mm-hmm. himself i'm a normal guy mm-hmm. i have a savings account i'm a normal so that's usually a phrase Asian people say in America, either from India or China, that's an Asian phrase. I think he is uh, Asian, actually. Because yeah. that's a very common thing is to say, because I read a study about words that appear all the time in dating profiles, and simple guy saying, I'm a simple guy, is like a really common phrase for guys from Asia. So, mm-hmm. whereas mm-hmm. white I forget what white guys say. It's something similar, but it's a different phrase. So that's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like it's some type of fixed up relationship. And listen, I think it is. It's um, it's a thing like where she um comes to the United States where he is, and they meet a few times on her visits, so they haven't spent a great deal yeah, of time. You can't, together. you can't do that and then try and expect it to be a love match. Like you just different. Thing. Well, that's a great point. So, so um, a love match could develop. I mean, a love can develop, right? I mean, people who are fixed up, even he wasn't fixed up, but let's say he was. It would well, be it sounds a similar like he was thing. Fixed up, right? Because yeah, we were you're fixed. Or something. So, yeah, yeah more it's a complicated one because I think he's not telling us the whole story. It's like, does he, what does he mean he thinks he could do better? Uh, well, he, he said that he doesn't, it's not like he's afraid of losing her, but he just doesn't feel like he's 100% happy That's, with her. That's what he said. That I'm not 100% happy I with her. I think I spouse. can do better, right? Right. I'm not 100. Okay. Let me, let me, what if I said it to you? I'm, I'm not 100% happy doing these calls with you. It means I think I could do it with someone better than you. That's what it means, right? So when he uh-huh. said, here's uh-huh. the thing. No, he uh-huh. can't because he would have. If he could have gotten someone better, he already uh-huh. would have, right? Like that's a silly thing to say because. <laughs> well, I think he's ticking the boxes. He immigrates to the United States, gets a good job, saves money. Now it's time for a girl. And this way, he didn't have to go dating and on apps. He just had a relative fix him up with somebody. So he, in exchange for that, he's going to get a girl he doesn't really know very well, and he's married to someone yeah. he doesn't know. You know, she's a almost a stranger to him. So he has to get to know her. That's all. Maybe he will fall in love. Yeah. With her. So yeah, this is a good thing. A lot of people think that love is I kiss her and I see fireworks. Right. I remember I got mm-hmm. into almost this. Is almost the last time I got into a fight. This guy was like. When you get up in the morning, doesn't your this is my girl? She was my girlfriend before my wife. Like, doesn't your girlfriend like motivate you to work hard that day? And I started laughing, and I was like, "That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard." I don't think about my girlfriend every time I sit at the computer and write an email. Like, it's not my motivation. And I was like, and I was like, and then I I got into it with him. I go, wait, 
didn't your girlfriend used to be a doctor and you got her to quit and now you guys are working in like an entrepreneurship selling some like gadget together i was like didn't you undo someone who actually had what we consider to be a calling aren't you the exact opposite of that like i was like you get up every morning and think oh i'm gonna sell this machine together like i got into the whole thing because that's you're trying to turn someone into not a person anymore when they become your muse or whatever like it's just you think so is are you saying that his expectations are yeah are way off is that what you're saying do you wake up, I, I mean, no one, I don't wake up every morning going, how am I going to make my wife's life better today? That's not the first thought I have. Now, here's what happens when I wake up. So uh, my wife and I sleep in separate I bedrooms. It. That's uh, a great start. I snore. <laughs> Let's make it love it. It's a great start. We love, I love having, we have a suite. We each have a separate bed. bedroom and a bathroom. We've, we've done the whole, okay. So as soon as I wake up, okay, uh, I, I'm up earlier and she is, I wait and then she um, sends me a message, a text message. Romantic. I'm up. Romantic. <laughs> and then I go, and then I go in a room and it's, I look forward to that so much. So then she's up, I just love it. And we just have a great time every morning. It's like, I'm excited. I'm so excited to see her and everything we do. And then when we, at night, before we go to bed, we spend time together like an hour. I'm so excited to do that. It's the highlights of my day. Um, but when we first got married, it was a little different. We didn't know each other very well then. We dated and lived together, but I would say that was a difference. But when we, let's say we first started to meet, we first met each other, you don't know anybody. It just takes time, you know? It takes a lot of time. I don't think you should expect to cry for joy on your wedding day. If you're just met someone a few times and you get married, I don't think you should expect that. I don't think you should expect to really like the person that much. That can develop, though. But I think if you expect it to develop, you're probably going to be upset, and that's probably an obstacle to it working yeah. out. Yeah, so this is good. You know what I mean is that a lot of people have these expectations. They describe their relationships of, oh, she's my inspiration, or, oh, we talk about everything all the time. Like We have these deep <laughs> talks about politics and religion and all of this stuff. And My wife and I don't do that. We do everything together. Like I don't no. do anything alone. Like I don't watch a movie alone. I don't watch TV alone. I don't do anything. I like to be in the room with me yeah. all the time or my kids with me, me. I always want someone with me. Um, so that's how I feel. So I think we're, we just describe it differently, but he's, it's not, it's just the person you like to be around. It's not, that's the thing is that most people, when they describe marriage, they describe it so aspirationally that when you actually get to it, you go, this isn't how they described it at all. I wonder if that's what's happened. He might have a great woman, but he's like, oh, I thought I would every morning wake up and hear fireworks and that. So I, yeah, so I. Crying for joy was the, the maybe giveaway I, there. He said, neither of us cried for joy at our wedding. Yeah, Why I, should you? I mean, I I, mean, I cried I, at my wedding. Have I made a horrible you didn't cry for mistake? Joy. Have I made a horrible mistake? <laughs> like, what have oh, I yeah. done? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but it wasn't, it wasn't no, joy. It, it wasn't. This is such a big, <laughs> no, it's because it's like, this is such a big decision. You only get to do this once. I don't know if this, I hope this was the right, I hope I made the right choice, right? Because it's the one time you go all in. So. I had to yeah. laugh about that one. That, that one just cracks me whole, up. But that's the thing is that like you and I both have good marriages uh, and we describe them very differently. But, they, you know, yeah. you it, I, I think is I see it from a negative perspective, which is like I don't like to be not with her, whereas you like to be with her. We're describing the same thing in different ways. And like to me, I see marriage as the person you're handcuffed to for the rest of your life for a lifetime prison sentence. And it's like you choose – the least annoying person you can for that. Is that a description of love? It's how I describe yeah. love. And I love my wife very much. I like to be with her all the time. But that means that whenever something bad happens, this is the person I ha I'm there who's going to shout at me. And I'm going to, you know what I mean? And if it, something good happens, we celebrate together. We're on the journey together. So marriage yeah. is. That's the thing. I think the point is that he develops a. So the first thing that can develop is a companionship. The ability to enjoy spending time with someone yeah. and doing things with them. That's the first thing he should do when he's get with his wife. And then eventually he can grow to love her. They can love each other eventually. But uh, just the companionship comes first in this case. Um, for a lot of love matches, it's the other way around, Jonathan, right? You get the sexual fireworks first. The companionship develops later or may not develop. And a lot of people are together because they had those sexual fireworks but they're not really companions with their partner. 
and they, it doesn't work out, and they and they get together and they, and they have a very sorry yeah, they don't. relationship. So I think this is a good way. To uh, do yeah, it. you know, there's a much higher success rate. We don't understand it from the West, but it, there's a much lower divorce rate, much higher success rate. People find a way to make it work, and just there's something interesting about it. Like, doesn't seem that crazy to me, but I think the important thing is that you have to see it as a journey. Everyone experiences marriage differently. That it's it's about a process and it's about time. It's not. I don't remember how I felt the day after my wedding anymore. That was so long ago. Like, I just know how I feel today. And you have to work on your marriage every day or it will atrophy. You have to water it, do things and maintain the different parts of it. And it's not everyone just the, just that most ways people describe marriages are not true. It's like, Oh, it's the person that like, it's my best friend or this and that. It's like, is it really? And that the problem is that, that you start to, not know what's real and like everything in movies is like kind of hard to find what's really navigate like oh we talk about everything together we're always happy together there's never any conflict and then the first time you have a fight you go oh, i guess i don't have a good marriage and it's hard to know because of that so the thing is to say listen man just ride this out you married her you obviously wanted to marry her the day before the wedding and try to spend time with her and develop a companionship first that you enjoy being with her and find things you can do together. Yeah, that's all. Like that's, See what happens. I like um, to. I don't like to talk to my wife. I like to do things with her. A lot of people when I first, was with the first year, I was like, oh, we never mm-hmm. talk about anything. I don't want to. I don't. My wife does has could care less about my job. She knows it has something to do with a computer. That's mm-hmm. as, that's as much as she cares. And that to me, that's great because I don't want to talk about work when I'm not at work. Right? I talk about other stuff. I don't want to talk about it either when I'm not. I love talking yeah. about it when I'm at work, but I don't want to talk about it with my wife. I don't talk about my wife about work, and people don't understand. Like, no, that's the point. She's not my business partner. If I want to talk about work stuff, I talk to you, right? If I want to talk about LLC stuff or this, mm-hmm. anything about business, that's I can talk to you or one of the other people from yeah. work from. Yeah. When I'm not at work, I don't want to be at work, and that's the thing is that you want someone who you just. The hardest thing is to have someone that you can be on a road trip with where you're sitting next to each other and one of you's driving, the other one's not driving, and you're it's an it's a comfortable silence. <laughs> if you yeah, can have a comfortable silence. silence with someone, you've got something yeah. really special. So aim for that. Yeah. I got yeah. a really do, a doozy yeah. here. What's the next one? I just found out my wife's not the age I thought she was. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I, I'm 28. Well. I just found out my wife is 33, not 31. So she's been using a misprint okay. driver's license. Hmm. And he, they, they're they married. They've been together for five years and he just found out that like, no, she's been lying to him because he's younger than her. He thought she was three years older. She's And he only found out because of like, the, she was talking and the brother was like, what are you talking about? You're this many years younger than me. Not, you know what I mean? Like one of those things where your brother outs you on act. Oh, yeah. Family. It's very oh, yeah, hard to remember your sister's face. So, so what's he saying about this? What's he saying about this? Is this a problem for him? Well, I no, think that like she's been keeping it a secret for five years is the problem more than the... Here's what I think happened. Hmm. I think what happened is she's like, oh, this. she meets a guy in a bar, whatever. He's a little younger. So she says, oh, he goes, I'm 20. She goes, oh, I'm 31. And what she's and now she has to stick with it. This this happened to me yeah, once. Right. Well, she doesn't have to stick with it. By the Each, way, she doesn't have to. Um, I lied to my I, I lied to my girlfriend about lots of things, and then when she became my wife, I slowly told. That's her what happens. So you, you know? I've gotten a situation where I've told a joke, and my the person I'm with this is not my wife, but I told someone I was lactose intolerant, and like. No, no ice cream for, with that girl for a long, like for six months. Like you just get stuck because you just don't want to bear. But what happens is it gets bigger and bigger. And so you're like, oh, I should have said it before, but now it's been longer and longer. And you look kind of faster. But there's something, here's how big it is. When they went in to have the baby, the wife, they go, oh, your age is this. And she goes, no, here's my ID. And they go, they go. She goes, you guys have the wrong age. I'm actually too, she's like still playing the game in the hospital. Like where she, the hospital. You know, what's funny is my, my mother, um, I don't know. She was probably in her fifties when she met her boyfriend for the rest of her life. And she lied to her, to him about it. And she never told him the truth ever for 30 something years. So what? I thought it was stupid, but she wanted to lie to him about it. So it doesn't end. 
So what? By the way, I think people lie about lots of things. And I don't think that you should worry if someone lied about something. It doesn't mean they're a quote uh, liar. Everybody uh, yeah. lies. I think the issue is that so. he still isn't sure of her age. It's like, just let's just, he doesn't care that she's five years older because it's not enough for it to be a big deal. But he's like, can you just, he's like, I, okay. he's like, I, hey, he's like, oh, I got to talk to her and kind of say, listen, I don't want to divorce you, but we need to rebuild trust. I think that's too big of a deal. I think what happened is something small. It's something small grew, right? I think she just said it in a flash and then it, it just got stuck for so long. Cause she yeah. But if you ever are on the other side of it and you're the one who lied, just tell her, you know what? I lied to you. I'm really don't, I really have three kids and I'm out on parole. And I said, none of that. I lied. You know, just tell her the truth. She should have done it right after the wedding day. Like, Hey, listen, I'm not feel, really feeling those wedding tears of joy. I'm 33, not 31. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where are the tears of joy? <laughs> Come on. I want three tiers, maybe four. No I like that three. one because it's not a big deal. Right. It's not something that horrible. And it's not a recent lie. It just happens when you don't, uh, when you let something grow. So here, here, here's a new one for you. I'm, I'm okay. 35 and I steered clear of women after I got a divorce. I just lost interest. I wasn't flirting. I wasn't socializing. I wasn't talking. And eventually, you know, that changes. And I've had some flings and one night stands. But I've noticed something. All my encounters with women, all of them, and my relationships since my marriage ended have all been initiated by the woman, not by me. So I think it's maybe because I sort of lost my edge as a guy, you know? But I'm just wondering if maybe because of now I'm older now, maybe women are seeing me differently and they think about me differently. Maybe they think of me as, you know, the older guy and that I'm a target and I'm easy pickings for them. Maybe that's what's going on here. What do you think? I think that <laughs> easy pickings. <laughs> it's like this. So let's say that a woman saw you, was attracted to you, and then created a situation where you thought you were the one asking her out. You're who? Who cares? It's about the result, right? So if you want to date. I think what he's saying is that women are pursuing him because they see him as a meal ticket. That's how I read. What Again, so what? Mm -hmm. so oh, okay. Guess what? Okay. Yeah. What my wife likes that I make money. I like that my wife is hot. So what? Like mm -hmm. people think mm -hmm. we're mm -hmm. just. Yeah. Is that we, a crime? We just put it on the table. Like it's just not a secret, right? <laughs> Again, people want to have this like imaginary romance where they're in love with each other, but not for anything that's true. So this is an old joke that I used to say with my friends is that most guys want a woman to like them only for things that are not true. So it's like, I don't want her to like me just because I'm a fireman. I don't want her to like me just because I'm a policeman. I don't want her to like me because I make money. He's like, you don't want to like her for anything that's true, right? You don't like, uh, like a woman's like, oh, I don't want to like a woman. The woman's like, I don't want him to like me just because I'm beautiful. And it's like, what do you want him to like you for? It's like my personality. And it's like, well, that's like only part of you, right? That's part of the package. That's a software without the hardware. It's like very, and then it's like, but then mm -hmm. the guy's like, I want you to like me for just what's on the outside, not the inside. Like, don't like me for my personality. Just like me for this part of my personality, right? Only like me because I'm funny. Don't like me because I'm mm -hmm. smart. And it's like this dumb game we play where we have to say, oh, like some parts of, your, of you as a person are okay to like and some parts aren't. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Who... I just, you don't get a choice about why somebody likes you. But but I think his point is that he's in a passage of life now where he's reaching women that are looking for him um, as a source of stability. And unless uh, you don't want to be, that, you know, his if you don't want to be that, if you like, I don't want to be in a long term relationship again, that's one okay. thing. If that's where he's at, then okay. But if he's like, oh, I'm looking for a long-term relationship, but I want a woman who likes me but doesn't like me because she wants a long-term relationship, like that's a riddle. <laughs> now we've got a Gordian knot we're trying to untangle. It's like people – this is like mm – -hmm. it was a champagne problem. It's like you, you don't have any problems, so you're looking for one. This guy's like, oh, women are flirt hitting on me all the time. Oh, wow. What was you? Man, what a, what a tough life this guy had. Mm -hmm. Like a real – He's, he's sitting back and these women are, are seducing him and he's complaining. He's yeah. found a downside. This is the type of it, guy that every other guy hates. I can tell you right now, every relationship yeah. I've ever had, I had to fight for like a dog. Every girl who's ever kissed me. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, me too. Whole, I don't know why. This I, whole I thing. Of like, how so dare you? Oh my god! You know what's tough? It's like it's so tough being handsome. Okay. Like, let's take it down a notch. So this guy is like, oh, they like me, but maybe yeah. they don't like me for me. How about just be grateful that they like you? Okay. You could be one of those guys at your age and a virgin. Yeah. Maybe he's kind of a jerk, you know, and maybe they just, and he should be lucky. He's Listen, lucky maybe he'll get his wish and maybe we'll stop liking it. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. I don't think we could be responsible for why people like us, but I do think, um, like you said, I like my wife because I'm very attracted to her sexually and her looks and her beauty and all of that. And she likes the fact that I make, you know, good money and she, she doesn't have to worry about that. Um, so what? Is that wrong? I don't know. Yeah, people just so. like, you cannot find a you problem can't build with a relationship so with no reality in it, right? It's like, oh, we only like each other for things that are ephemeral. Like, we don't like anything about each other's lives or houses or families or bodies or income. It's like, what? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's just like people looking for it. That's interesting because, yeah, um, I just think that it's very easy to look for something to complain about. Got one that I think is yeah. interesting. So this brings up the dynamic. This woman is thir- like 33. Her, husband's, her and her husband are in the 30s. When she was a teenager, she got pregnant, had a kid with a guy, didn't work out. Recently, now her daughter is dating someone who's like, m- mom doesn't like her. It's like a lot of moving parts, right? So they have a family dinner. So it's this woman, yeah. her her current husband who's not the father, he's the stepdad. The original dad is there and the her daughter's boyfriend is there and the the boyfriend's mom is like talking smack about the daughter, like saying mean stuff about her at the dinner. And she's like, what are you doing? If this is how you talk about my daughter when I'm around, what kind of stuff are you saying when I'm not around? Like, that's not how you talk to people. You need to really think about what kind of... Per- anyway, she makes a scene, right? And then... Wow. Um, you know, and they, the, the other family storms off and then the boyfriend's like, I'll get my mom to apologize. Da, 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 da. It's very a sitcom. It's very much a sitcom. It's hard to believe this is a real story. And then the current husband is like, you know, you want to calibrate because if you make an enemy of this woman, right, then it's just, everything's going to be hard. And then yeah. she, Oh yeah. It's the age old problem. Age old problem. He goes, How I you get along with your, you want to defend your daughter, but also. You catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. And she goes, hey, you know what? Why don't you mind your own business? I don't need your advice about my daughter. Right? And this is the curse of the stepdad, right? Now you're in a mixed family. It's like, well, how much of a role am I allowed to have? Right? She's like, well, I have the original there. And it's like, well, you know what? You married this dude. So, and she goes... You know, her question is like, did I make a mistake? And the answer is, well, yeah. You, what you're saying that is like a nuclear bomb to a step parent. You're not her real dad. Your opinion mm-hmm. doesn't matter. Because what will what will happen is that he'll go because there's two possibilities, right? He'll either be really hurt or he'll go okay, and he'll start pulling back, at least from loving your daughter, right? So now she'll have a darkness in her life, or he'll also pull back from you. Because it's like you're right. I'm only part. Of, I'm only thirty percent of this marriage, not fifty percent. What's the right way to deal with this situation? What should she have said when she, you know, because he backed her up in public. He backed when the woman was there. He backed her up a hundred percent. Only when no one was there. Like he did the right. In my opinion, that's the right thing. In public, not to be a partner, even when they're that wrong. That's the right thing. Yes. I, what, what is there? What else is there? I mean, that's exactly in private as well. I think you have to do it in private as well. It has to be. So otherwise you're um, playing a political situation like politics. You can't play politics. So if I'm married and my mother doesn't like my wife, I'm going to defend my wife and my mother can get lost. You know, she's just going to have to accept that. I don't know. Is that your feeling as well? I mean, Yeah, I think that he said something that wasn't so crazy. He's like, hey, we might want to calibrate we, the woman was in the wrong, but maybe we want to calibrate so that she doesn't hate us and it kind of gets harder and harder for our daughter, right? But once you, but she said the nuclear thing, which is, she's not your daughter. Your opinion doesn't matter. She has a dad. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. honestly, if I was the guy, I'd be like, oh, 
we're divorced now because that means I'm not your partner. I know. This she is a shot bad a situation. major nuclear warhead. Yes, now, uncalled for. The, the thing is that men and women fight differently when we're having disagreements, right? And this is like, if it was reversed, it wouldn't have been the same way because men, we don't like to have our disagreements in public very much. Like, I don't. If I'm having a fight no. with my wife, I don't want to have it in front of the kids. I don't want to have it in public. Things that will cause right. – like I don't want to have a fight that will like expand and I don't want to say things that can't be taken back. That's why I start fake fights all the time so we get the energy out without it mattering. I don't want to do – whereas my wife will say things you can't take back and she will do it in public in ways that like – she'd have a – like if she was upset enough, she would have a fight like in front of the kids – teachers and stuff and like then it's like a problem for the you know what i mean we're like now the kids are embarrassed I'm like what are you doing now it's like growing but like when she's mad she'll do that so he's found you have to decide what you're willing to put up with and how you're going to deal with it so i mean this is a tough one okay all right so here is one i think that's uh, let's find this out here I want to go back to the guy that's in his mid thirties or late thirties and he thinks women are asking him out or whatever as a meal ticket. Okay. What if you are not okay with that as a man? What do you do if you want, if you don't want to be their meal ticket? You know, if you don't want women to look at you that way, how, how do you, you have to find a woman that's making her money and has a career on her own then, right? I saw um, a TV show where a guy was like a dating show and he like, he didn't want the woman for his money Mm -hmm. he was a very wealthy guy so what he did is he showed her like his gardener's house and like borrowed his gardener's car Mm -hmm. and then Mm -hmm. at the end of the date Mm -hmm. when she really liked him even though he wasn't that wealthy he goes you've passed now here's my real house guess how she reacted oh wow oh i don't want to be with you you're a lying cheat i I liked you the first way i yeah you made an assumption about me that I'm a gold digger, so you made me run through a bunch of tests, and now my reward is a prize. Yeah, yeah, it's offensive. It's so insulting that, but that's the way to do it. Yeah. That's the only way to do it is to pre- pretend. Oh, and honest, and but also you can never do the re- sorry, but you never do the reveal. You have to now live below your means. This is what I talk about. You get a line, you lock in. You have to. <laughs> Lock in whatever you pretend, want her to make if you like her and slowly give yourself raises for the next five or ten years. It's the only way out. But. Eventually, the truth, the, the truth is in alignment with uh, what yeah, you Yeah, either that or you just have to live below your means forever, which I guess is okay. Like your kids will have like a big slide there. I think you just have to admit you lied. There's no, you know? but that's a big one. That's like a real, why would you lie about how much money you make? Oh, because I just assumed you were a gold digger. There's no other answer to that question of why did you lie about money? That's why she's going to be upset. Yeah. Well, I think the answer would be I don't know you very well yet. And I have had women that have been after me for their money, for my money. And I didn't want to go through that. And I think you're much better than that. And that's why I wanted to go out with you. And I just, you know, I'm sorry. But, yeah, you know, um, once you're screwed over by someone in a certain way, you're very sensitive to that again. And it's not her, the new girl's fault because she wasn't the gold digger, yeah. but you didn't know that. Just don't. It's understandable. Don't drive an expensive car. Don't go to expensive restaurants. Don't wear an expensive watch if you don't want her to know you have money. Like, it's easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but it's hard to, you know, you're, there's something about someone with money, you know, not just their car, or their watch, but they're just the kind of person. They just, they have an aura about them. Don't you think? My best friend in college used to say, he's like, you can always tell when someone's rich by how they sleep. He's like, he's like, they just sleep so easy at night. <laughs> like, he's like, I want to sleep like that one day. And, uh, and it's like, you know, there's um one of my other, cause one of my other friends was like, the way you can tell is like, if someone after they finish the cereal, if they drink the milk out of the bowl or not, rich people don't they throw it away. And poor people are like mm-hmm. licking the bowl, you know, because they value mm-hmm. every penny of it. Right. And that's the difference. But, yeah, you have this. I've known many. I've known rich people who are like that. I have. I know people that have a hundred times more money than I have, and they're much cheaper than I am. They think I'm. A, I'm just wasteful because I don't think the way they do. So you know, sometimes you get to very cheap yeah. people that are very rich. It happens all That's the time. That's how they stay rich. So, yeah, I um, think that. I mean, 
I don't know. I don't know how you hide it and then everything. Like, meal ticket's a strong word. It means that she wants to marry him. That's like nice. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, well, the idea is you, I want someone who loves me for who I am, not how much money I have. It's but part of who you realistic. are. It's a comp- part of who you are. And also, why shouldn't someone want to get attached to someone that has financial security? Yeah, why it's like, you? let's say, okay, let's say this. Okay, you can let women know how much money you have and you can get a 10 or you can keep it a secret and you can get a 7. Make your choice, guy. <laughs> like, right? Like, because the quality of you bring, yeah. what you bring to the yeah. table and one of the things that matters to women is security, that affects who's attracted to you. Yeah. I've got one yeah. here from a lady in her 30s. I think this one's yeah. fun because it's the opposite yeah. side of it. She's like, I'm just coming off a divorce. I'm in a 30. I met a guy through a dating app who decided, we decided to be a situation ship, friends with benefits. And we go and meet in person and like first he's like can't believe she makes more money than him even though he's 10 years older than her why people talk about money on the first date like so weird and then he says here's some of the things he says to her that's ridiculous you're gonna be miserable in five to ten years because you didn't prioritize finding a partner to have babies with and well it's attractive Mm -hmm. kindest man in the world can be working in kfc and women won't give him a chance because he doesn't have a career and men are providers i don't understand why women are allowed to earn more than their male colleagues Allowed. <laughs> you know, I don't know why the gender pay gap way, exists yeah. because men do work that women can't. All women have been brainwashed mm-hmm. by feminism. Okay. You say you're empowered, showing your body. Why is he sharing this just with somebody? That's my question. Why is he this sharing is a this? Friends with benefits meeting. It's not even a date. Like, why is he like? Why don't you want to have kids when he's trying to do a short term thing? I mean, surprisingly, this woman got turned off and said, "You know what? I'm not going to sleep with you." And he was like surprised by the plot. Shocking. It's the Abraham Lincoln quote. It's better to have people look at you and think you're an idiot than to open your mouth and prove them correct. So there's, mm-hmm. here's the greatest <laughs> secret I can tell any man about getting to sleep with a woman. There comes a moment in an interaction where a woman decides that she's going to sleep with you. Mm-hmm. And all you have to do is not say something stupid and just yeah. don't screw up. You, just don't you screw think up. you're trying to, you know, the, you know, like when someone keeps trying to make the sale after they've made the sale and then they lose. Well, they say you're talking yes. yourself out of the sale. The sale was made and you're still talking. You should shut up person, and close the deal. Just the person's like, here. okay, where do I slide my credit card? You're like, wait, let me tell you more of the benefits. And they're like, I'm ready to buy now. Yeah. So that's what this guy had, right? A woman yeah. who's ready to sleep with him. And then he goes, let me tell you. Well, I don't think that any relationship, whether it's a friends with benefits thing, contemplated or a real relationship, that you should be talking about political things early on or your thoughts about politics or women's position or pay levels. You should never talk about any of that. Why? Because all it is is a huge negative and it has nothing to do with whether you're going to be happy and compatible anyway. So you're just introducing a big negative. And you're not helping anyone meet the right person. So why are you these doing are just these just big... shut up? My wife always likes to tell the story. She said, when I met my husband, she says, I was talking about this political stuff. I had just been to a political rally. And I he didn't say anything, but I assumed he agreed with me. So I just told him all about it. So she tells that story, which is true. <laughs> I didn't agree with her at all. I totally think the guy that she went to a rally for was like a horrible person. But I didn't say anything. Why would I? I wanted to sleep with her. I didn't want to, you know, yeah. argue with her. There's no so, upside to telling someone this stuff. There's no like way it makes her more attracted to you, so don't do it. And, <laughs> no. I don't even get why people do it. Jonathan, I don't know why people spend their time on Twitter or X, whatever, and they and they go or Facebook and they go on and on about their opinions. Like, who cares? I mean, let me I don't ask even you a question. Do that. You've been with your wife a long um, time. Do you know who she's voted for in every election? I think so. I mean, I, I think so, unless she lied. Oh, because for my wife, we live in different countries, so she votes in a different set of elections. I have no idea. Okay. And guess what? It hasn't affected our marriage. Part of- well, my wife mostly votes wrong, but I don't vote, yeah. so, you know, she, it's she like, votes wrong. There's people that, like, you know, think that's the... <laughs> it's it's yeah, and I think it's the most important part of a person, and it's like it's the least interesting thing about them. 
But I just think you have to respect everyone's views, um, even if you don't agree with them. You really have to respect her view, even but, if you don't agree with her. But it's better just to shut up and yeah, never bring it up. You, when you make these big statements like the, the most, the kindest man in the world could be working a dead end job, and women won't be attracted to him, and that kind of statement is just such a beta statement. It's such a way of saying it's about me, but I'm pretending. It's like when you're saying something about your friend, like my friend has an STD. It's like, is it your friend or is it you? So mm-hmm. yeah, people just say silly things. Um, is the yeah okay you got one for me so this is a woman she says I met my husband about six years ago mm-hmm. um, at a happy hour actually um, you know I'm in my uh, I was in my 50s he was about 60 he looked like my type he was uh on a Harley and he had a Harley shirt. He was tall and handsome and all that. Um, and, and I, and I guess, you know, I had been so single and I had learned that it's important for me to have an alpha male partner, someone that I can, you know, really respect and look up to like a, she says, uh, a business owner, a military veteran, a strong driven person like that. That's what she said. Someone who also makes me laugh, has boundaries, etc. I thought that was kind of interesting. So right. they get married. Okay. And she says, well, how can I be unhappy about this? Well, I think that my judgment was clouded. I mean, I liked the rugged, handsome type, okay? But actually, it turns out he's just a nice guy, and that's really not enough for me, okay? He doesn't have bas- masculinity look like the part, but he's really not, okay? And, and like, you know, uh, before my, my, my used to with my, old, my ex-husband, I would always, uh, you know, come and everything, but he doesn't do that. He just doesn't really understand sex. Um, he doesn't know anything about it, really. Um, I just feel like I'm not attracted to him now because he's too nice. He's a nice guy, and I didn't really want that. I'm personally not that nice, and I don't respect him anymore. It's very sad. I don't want to go through a divorce again. He works hard. Yeah. He's financially doing well. We're comfortable, but I don't know what to do. What do you think I should do? That's the question. I yeah. thought that was so, so interesting. She sounds like an awful person to me. Like, she... I know. Well, she kind of admitted. So, it. she's <laughs> she kind of sounds not a nice she's person. Like, she want... says that really. So I don't want to be with a guy who's honest. nice to me. Think about how crazy that. Yeah. So, so basically, she thought he was a certain way because of his Harley and his muscles and his shirt, but she discovered, even though she wasn't looking. Um, she looked at him a certain way, and so she didn't get the signs yeah. that he wasn't that way. Uh, he was signaling one thing, but in there really she, was another. I know what she, the, the surface. What she's saying should have known criminal. that. She's saying I thought he was like a criminal in and out of jail. He's like just a because then she said he's not masculine, right? He still has the muscles. He still rides the Harley. It's that oh, but he doesn't do the other thing that goes with it. And that third part, I guess sexually he's not. She's not uh, you know taking right her like a criminal, wants, right? Like he's not. Mm-hmm. I guess putting his foot on her head while they're in the bedroom or like whatever weird yeah. you know, making, her making her whatever, wear his you know. motorcycle gang vest, whatever the thing is that she's looking for. It's probably <laughs> whatever she wants him to do. It's probably something horrible. Right? It's probably something that would make both of us uncomfortable. So I've been in this situation. I think one thing is when you, when you meet somebody, um, you have to like look for signs of who they really are. Well, beneath the surface. And I think that's kind of what this brings out to me that she doesn't he's, look full of Well, she said he's not, he's not masculine. He, he's got big muscles and a Harley that's pretty masculine. So whatever she's saying, right, is something else. I think she means in sex. With yeah, sex, it sounds like she she's likes about. And rough, she's just a nice guy. Um, lets her make all the decisions. Doesn't walk all over her. Her ex, you know, set boundaries. She used the word boundaries. He probably told her, you know, what he did, wanted to do. Not this guy's saying, "Hey, do whatever you want. I'm cool with whatever yeah. you do." Maybe he's here. like a California you know? motorcycle guy, like really like Northern California hippie motorcyclist, right? Like the easy rider stuff. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing that's like confusing to a lot of people, which is that the father and the mother have different roles. Like the mother's role is to tell the kids you can do anything. And the father's is to like set boundaries so that they don't get hurt, try and jump off the roof of the house and see if they can fly. Mm-hmm. So people hate to talk about mm-hmm. this because they think it's misogynist, but it's like the purpose of a husband, part, your job in the relationship is to set boundaries. She's saying he's not doing no. that. And I want it. I want to know 
I want to have boundaries in my, and it's just a hard thing to understand because to people it sounds like control, which is what it's not, but it's like, um, well, sometimes it could be control. Some women get turned on by a man saying, telling her what to wear, yeah, or not to be, wear, things like that's that. That's obviously you know, too far for it, but it can be like this. Let's say you and I are going to play a game of chess, but you don't know how big the board is. How is that going to be fun? So you, mm-hmm. Without knowing the size of the board, you can't have fun. That's what boundaries really means. It's like, oh, I know the area in which we can have fun in and, mm-hmm. and that stuff. So yeah, it sounds like, I mean, it sounds to me like she wants him to do stuff that's either criminal or close to criminal or awful. Mm-hmm. And she has mm-hmm. probably she needs to enter therapy. So it sounds like to me is like because it's a dangerous area. If she's like, oh, I want him to like be rough or choke me or something like that, like that's a something I don't like to give advice on. Mm-hmm. I've been in those situations. It makes me super uncomfortable. I was with a woman. Okay, so I was with the woman who said, ahead, "Can you ahead. take off your belt?" And I said, "What for?" And she was put it around my neck, and then she's like, "You take it and you put it through the belt loop, and then you like," and I said, "There's." I said, there's no way I'm doing that. That's, how did you even come up with that? Like, to me, that was so hard. And she was like, I guess you're not a real man. I was like, yeah, I guess I don't, if that's a real man, okay, then I'm not. Because that's not something I'm comfortable doing. I'm, there's a, everyone has a different line. And some people, if you need to have, like, if you have to be at the 1% end of the bell curve for extreme in the bedroom where everything has to be like, bring in, like, if you have to bring in anything from Clue, whether it's rope or a candlestick, right? Or a dagger. Yeah, I'm not your guy. Even if it's just a candle, right? Like I don't – even if you just want to like candle me or candle wax, whatever, yeah, I'm not your guy, right? If it's got to be extreme mm-hmm. and that's your starting point. So it's also like well, how long was it between when she met the guy and married him? She's making it sound like it was the same day. Well, and she does. So, so she didn't look at the signs that he wasn't what she wanted him to be. But um, I do think that there's always like a dominant person in a relationship. And there's no um, advantage necessarily to being the dominant one or the submissive one. There's not one better than the other. Um, but it's just there is. And I think she wanted him to be dominant, and he's not dominant. So I think if you want someone to be dominant, you should make sure that they are dominant before you marry them. That's all. Make sure they are that what should you be think open. they are. That's something that's not, doesn't really change. People are, there's plenty of men that are submissive and there's plenty of women that are dominant, um, even though, you know, it, it, it does, and, and it's good. You could find a match for your, for your being first. Uh, but I think this first is date a question on the BDSM scale. Or are you, are you at the mm-hmm. submissive? Yeah. Do you prefer the, do you prefer being spanked or do you prefer doing the spanking? You Either know, way it's fine. Or are you a, you know, are you a boring whatever. person who likes to make eye contact in the bedroom? <laughs> <laughs> that's boring now. Are you one of those, you one of those pansies <laughs> that makes love to their wife? Even doggy style, she could have a mirror. Don't you dare. Yeah, maybe that's... Well, it's, it's love I got it, but, All right. All right, I got one for you. This, all right, so... Okay. This is a mom. She's on 55. I've got two kids. My son, who's around 30, has a daughter under 10, leaves his wife because... The spark went out. And of course, he mm. moves back in with his mom, with the daughter. And then, like, he's got a new girlfriend. She comes home, and the girlfriend is not being nice to the granddaughter. And the daughter's, like, screaming, and they're ignoring her, right? And the mom, the gra- she's like, hey, oh. are you sure this, this – talks to him. Again, not in public, was, hey, are you sure this is girlfriend's right? Because she's not really – I'm not down with how she treats my granddaughter. Mm. Listen, you want to see – you want to see the dark sure. side of a woman messing with one of her grandkids. It's like even worse than messing with her kids. It's like, yeah, this, I, if this story ended with, and then I grabbed a claw hammer, I wouldn't be surprised. Cause it's like, as soon as you hear like, she made my granddaughter cry. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Oh gosh, this story's going to, mm-hmm. so, no, I think that's awful. The, the well, son is like, Hey, listen, truly you, awful. you don't get to get yeah. involved in my business. And I was, which is fighting words, right? People say that all people jump to that too quickly. You have to really build up to that, in my opinion. And then the mom's like, that's cool. Get out. Which, because she kicks him out. And it's like, listen, you know, you aren't, oh, it's twins. Sorry, they have two kids. It's twins that are like six or seven years old. And she's like, listen, you can't, I don't want someone in the house who, and this, I feel like I am in line with the grandma. If I feel like someone is not 
my kids aren't safe with someone or my grandkids like that's it like nothing else matters i believe that children are um have to be like respected and what how people treat children is like so 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 important more important than anything else it's so weird the situation but yeah i mean if you don't like if you don't want to be with the kids don't do custody right don't have custody like let the mom have them full time and you just pay for them and then you you yeah um, yeah that's the thing is that you and you get she's like this new girlfriend's the evil stepmom who wants to send the kids off to swiss boarding school or whatever right like that's the thing yeah you yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah. guys tend to and because you see it in the movie you go no no dad would ever do that but it's not true right we all they all get distracted by the the bedroom right. fund and they completely ignore the the balance yeah. right or and then there's the other end of the dad who goes I won't date until she's eighteen right like that's the other end of the spectrum there's something in between but you have to when yeah. you're going into a mixed family it's part of the package you just have to accept it like you can't join a family with kids and be like well I'm just not going to interact with the kids right because it just means you're always having a problem and like mm-hmm. you can't. Bring someone and say, hey, I want you to be a husband but not a father to the kids that live in the house with you because you're going to be in situations where you have to do discipline and it can't – if you don't know where you stand, mm-hmm. right, you can end up being like, well, I can't stop the kids from doing something that's dangerous and they could get hurt but I'm not allowed to say anything because I'm not the real dad. That's the danger mm-hmm. when you right. have an undefined role or you're not allowed to be the father you're gonna be a situation where you see something and you can't stop it even though it can be dangerous that's the real problem right not just kid being bad but being hurt right you know like right and that's exactly meant it could be it could be psychically it could be you know it doesn't have to be hurt physically it's just it's you know why would somebody yeah and it's like well i'm not allowed to talk to you because i'm not your real dad feel better like that's and so i understand what's going on here is just a lot of moving parts this is why like stop getting married at 18 stop having kids thinking kids will solve your problems don't leave because the spark went out that's not a real that's not a divorce reason that's like mm-hmm. yeah i've had the spark go out plenty yeah. of times it's exactly. yeah the spark um <laughs> why should you be entitled to a spark all the time yeah who, who, who promised you a spark? who told you that you deserve to be happy because they lied to you. Like who told you that you deserve to be happy? Who told you that marriage was easy because they lied? I am not happy yeah. every day. Okay? Like guess what? I have bad days. We and that doesn't yeah. mean I You know what? You actually told me something many, many years ago when I interviewed you for something we were doing. And you said you have to be ready when you're with somebody that maybe you won't be able to have sex again. Maybe something will happen to them. You never know. And I really liked you for saying that. Um, I didn't know you, but I thought, this is a cool guy to be saying that because it's something that's true and it's because, not an easy thing. Um, yeah, I don't, because do you remember that? When it, you don't know what can happen. She can get sick. There's a certain type of kid. Like, yeah. yeah. You're not going to have a spark. Guaranteed there will be no yeah. spark when she's no, sick. That- there, or you're this, sick. There'll be no spark. People no think spark. the only reason they stop having intimacy is because she gets bored of you. There are certain type of cancers, right, where they have to do stuff down there, right, that just just burns all the parts away or something, right? Like there's all sorts of things. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like she wants it, but it's gone. Or there's a lot of things that can happen. Or you get these different types of illnesses or whatever. So you, when you're choosing yeah. a partner, it's like you aren't guaranteed the ending that you want you don't know how you know you don't know how the story is going to end you don't know what you're what tomorrow you only know what you're kind of going this is the person that when bad things happen that's who i want there by my side that's all you can choose you don't get to choose Mm -hmm. which bad things happen to you because yeah but but i'm just saying guaranteed there will be no spark yeah uh, quite often or, you know, and it may be for uh, years. Um, if your wife gets cancer, there may be no spark. Or you get cancer, who told maybe you? no spark. Uh, the point of it is that uh, no one who told you you're going to have a spark way. every day of your marriage for the rest of your life. That's stupid. 
This guy is a stupid yeah. guy. Marriage is hard. Yeah. There's going to be bad days. You stay together for the kids. You got what got yeah. in it. You had kids. And that should be the center of your focus. Like every, mm-hmm. it's so right. strange to me. And I don't know. I waited to have kids until I was totally ready. Right. I'm a little bit older. I'm not done having kids. Like mm-hmm. we're, it's mostly a financial decision. The reason we're waiting another year to have our next kid is just to have like a little pacing. But mm-hmm. man, people who have kids and don't want them blow my mind. Like I don't get that because it's, it's easy mm-hmm. to not have a kid. I know. <laughs> like it's easy to not get pregnant. I've yeah. never had a preg- a real pregnancy scare, right? It's easy to, yeah. in an ideal world, you are both have protection, right? She's on birth control and you're condoms and then there's no, yeah. like a double like two layers of protection right this whole thing of like got married really young had kids the spark went out you know the spark went out just means i thought i could get someone hotter that's what it means it's just like right for that and it's like right guess what not all the glitters is gold just because it's pretty on the app it doesn't mean it's going to be a good yeah. mom. Like the thing, this is why I like, I hate when women have lists of what they're looking for and it's never the right. Your mm-hmm. list should be good. Dad never calls me fat. Mm-hmm. Never hits me. I remember one time my dad mm-hmm. had this conversation with me and he was like, um, and you know, my dad and I've had ups, ups or downs. You've been there for some of the downs. And he said to me like on a scale of one to 10, how am I as a dad? And I was like, well, you never abused me. Out of all of my friends, in my circle of friends, I'm the only one. So you're top ten percent. How crazy is that? Like that? That's true. What does he mean? What does he mean? Abused? No, what I said that. Out of my circle of friends, all of my friends oh, when I was okay. going from high school into college right. had an incident of high level abuse with their with their dads. I was the only. Or one of my friends was his uncle. All of my friends, but I never. I was never abused as a child. All of my friends, and I'm talking more than mm-hmm. 20 guys in my group, had all had something horrible happen when they were children. And I was like, the bar for being a great dad is mm-hmm. so low. But women, mm-hmm. that's the first, I'm always shocked. Like, that should be the first thing you look for, right? So how mm-hmm. about this? Right. If, someone, right. if right. someone tries to hurt my kids, the devil inside him will come out. Like, that's what you should be looking for yeah. not like is he six feet tall how about he'll right. never and it's like it's the things test. you should like you want what you want are like not long-term character traits. long-term character traits are he will love my kids and take care of them forever if i get sick how about this if i get sick and stop being pretty he'll still take care of me it's never on anyone it's never on a list right and guys the guy's no, list no, is like no, skinny and big boobs it. right how about she'll never laugh at my penis? Mm. That's right. How about that one? That's a great one to have. Like, I don't. How about that'd be cool. Yeah. She will take care of me when I get old. Right? How about she won't wait till I'm uh-huh. old and then leave with all the money? Like the things that men do it too. That's why I mean we're both guilty of it. We don't really think about long term. What is a good long term relationship trait? Because people never talk about. It. We never get questions about that. Right? How do I find a? How would I tell? No one ever says. How do I tell if a guy is. Everyone says their ex-boyfriend's a narcissist. Now, how do I tell if a guy's going to become a narcissist? <laughs> like, no one ever asks that, right? It's always my ex is a narcissist. Mm-hmm. How do I avoid t- dating someone who's selfish? So I just think that like a lot of this, once you bring kids into the picture, you are not, it's not a game anymore, right? The rules for divorce change. The rules for how you fight change. The rules for what you do and who you date change. Like, right. I, if I die, right. I want my wife to find another guy who will be a great stepdad. Not a guy who will be hot. Yeah. <laughs> like it's not yeah. what I'm looking for. I don't want a hot guy who treats my right. kids bad. No. Right? Because then I want the kids to be monsters, right? I want then I want the kids to kill them. Well, actually, I would say that the people that would be good fathers, mm-hmm. uh, stepfathers, would probably be not as handsome, rugged, and attractive and masculine as you know, so they might be someone that she's not necessarily super attracted to as much as other guys because he's more beta you know men with high testosterone uh who are really masculine and everything they ne- they don't really necessarily want to raise someone else's kid no Just you're and that's the thing is that when you're you have to well no one wants exactly to where i live in a different country women do date more strategically there's a lot 
thought and they do mm -hmm. okay. things like that. They figure out what type of guy is at least like, they look at, oh, I don't want a guy who's too handsome. He's more likely to cheat. And this is in certain countries. So there are certain countries, like when I dated women from Eastern Europe, especially Makes Southern sense. East Europe, they were like, I won't date a guy who's any skinnier than you because like to them, chubbiness is a sign of wealth. And like, also it's like, you're not going to, you know, it's like a stray. There's elements to it. Like women do look at certain, in other cultures, they go, I, I like certain things, you know, it's only in the West that we, women are really attracted to traits that are also like the highest, the traits that are also like the highest rates of cheaters. <laughs> like, yeah, they're, they're actually like the worst traits for the long run, the best ones for the short run. Because it's like, you basically. know what will guarantee that he's a good father so. is a six pack. Like, listen, I would love to have one. I think it's great, but it's like, yeah. it's so interesting. Like we always, you, and it's fine if you're. Well, there is some good news. I mean, some women, apparently, they claim women are attracted to the dad bod, a lot of women. Maybe they are. Yeah. In some ways. Because yeah, maybe they're looking for that meal ticket guy from earlier. <laughs> yeah, that's why they're looking for him. All right. Well, we should wrap up. Well, thank you so much. As always, really appreciate it. If you send in questions, you could send them to Matt at GetRapidHelp.com, and we would love to answer them for you. Um, and uh, we will see you next week. Thank you so much. All right.